Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome back to Just Call Maggie, your favorite real estate channel. I'm Maggie Reyoso, and today we're diving into the world of property legal descriptions. We'll explore the fascinating history behind them, how each method is used, and break down the three different ways to legally describe a property with sample questions similar to the ones that you may see on your real estate exam. But before we embark on this exciting journey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and hit that notification bell so you never miss our latest real estate insights. Let's get into it. So there are three different methods to legally describe a property. Number one, the surveyor's method or meets and bounds. Number two, the government survey method, also called the rectangular method. And number three, the lot and block method, which is also called the plat method or recorded plat method and is the one most widely used today. To truly understand property descriptions, we need to take a step back into time. Back in the day when landowners needed a way to define the boundaries of their land, property descriptions date back centuries and they were crucial for land ownership, legal documents, and sometimes even etched onto stone markers. Let's kick things off with method number one, the surveyor's method also known as meets and bounds. Okay, so what are meets and bounds? Only the oldest yet most accurate land surveying method used to describe a particular property's boundaries that goes way back to colonial times. Think of it like the OG GPS. Imagine being an early settler in a vast uncharted wilderness and you needed a way to lay claim to your piece of paradise. In the meets and bounds method, Surveyors use distances and directions, often referring to natural features or what is called monuments, like rivers, rocks, or trees, to create a detailed description of their land. They start at a designated point called the point of beginning and work their way around the property. It's like drawing a treasure map with words, ensuring anyone can find their way around the land. Let's dive in further. So, the meat part? tells us the distance between two points like inches, feet, yards, and miles. It would be something like start at the oak tree, walk 200 feet northeast to the river. And the bounds part describes the angles and compass directions to the property's boundaries. Follow the riverbank turning 90 degrees southwest at the big rock. So how does it all work? Well, we begin with a point of beginning, which is the direction from the monument to the edge of the property. The survey will continue to describe the directions and distances, or meets and bounds, that make up the perimeter of the property until it gets back to the point of beginning, which is called a closing. An example of an original meets and bounds property description will look something like this. To figure out the property boundaries or its perimeter, surveyors use a circular method to identify the direction in which the survey moves around the property's boundary. Remember, the point of beginning and each of the turning points or corners of the property are observed as if centered in a circle. Just like any compass, the circle used by surveyors has north, east, south, and west lines and you will always begin with either a north or south direction, followed by the number of degrees east or west the property line goes. You cannot have more than 90 degrees per description. A common meets and bounds question on your real estate exam will be something like this. What is the opposite of north 30 degrees east? And your answer will be south 30 degrees west. Now you know how to get the legal description in real estate property with the original way using the meets and bounds method. And this method is still used today. Pretty cool, right? Let's move on to the next method. Method number two, the government survey method, also known as the rectangular method. This method was developed in 1785 to make it possible for people to claim their land 
during the Western expansion of the United States. Basically, the country was growing and they needed a systematic way to divide and distribute the land. This method divides the surface of the earth into a grid with numbered squares, where each numbered square can be subdivided repeatedly into smaller squares. For example, the state of Florida was surveyed using this method and it all begins in Tallahassee, Florida's capital, where a north-south line called the Tallahassee Principal Meridian intersects the east-west line called the Tallahassee Baseline. All legal descriptions in Florida originate from this point, which is literally a survey marker in the ground that looks like this. Florida and many other states are subdivided into squares called townships that are parallel lines at six mile intervals called meridians that run north-south, and the east-west lines are called baselines. A township is six miles square or 36 square miles and looks like this. Notice the way it's numbered from the northeast corner right to left, then left to right like a snake until you get to 36. Therefore, each one of these sections measures one mile by one mile or one square mile, which equals 640 acres. Let's do the math. If one mile equals 5,280 feet and one acre equals 43,560 square feet, then one section is 5,280 feet times 5,280 feet, which equals 27,878,400 square feet. Divide that amount by 43,560 square feet and you get a total of 640 acres. There's that magic number we learned about in real estate school. These conversion ratios seen here are important to memorize for certain calculations you may see on your real estate exam. Let's dive in and discuss a common question found on the real estate exam that covers this concept. It reads something like this. Find the acreage of a parcel with the legal description of the northwest one-fourth of the southeast one-fourth and the northeast one-fourth of the northeast one-fourth of the southeast one-fourth of section 10. Notice the word and in this sentence. This indicates there are two adjacent tracts within the single parcel. Let's solve this question and see how many acres this parcel contains. Since we see there are two parcels here, we'll begin with the first one. I'll highlight the first one in green. We know that one section equals 640 acres, so let's begin with that number. Then we're going to take the denominator of each fraction, that's the bottom number, and then divide. So 640 divided by four equals 160 acres. Then we take the 160 and divide it by the next denominator of four, and that equals 40 acres. Now I'll highlight the second parcel in orange and repeat the same process. So 640 divided by four equals 160. Then 160 divided by four again equals 40. Then 40 divided by four one last time equals 10. Now we add up the first parcel that contains 40 acres and the second parcel with 10 acres and get a total of 50 acres. The government survey method or the rectangular method is more like a grid-like system kind of like a giant checkerboard where each piece of a land is defined by its position within this grid. It's like playing a massive game of chess with square mile pieces. Okay, on to the next method. Method number three, the lot and block method, also known as the plat method or recorded plat method. This method is the most widely used today, especially in urban areas. It's used to identify small parcels of property in subdivided areas and cities. The subdivision or city map is based on a survey that describes the entire area, usually by meets and bounds. The platted subdivision is then cut up into streets, lots, and blocks where each street is named and each block and each lot is numbered. 
The plat map is then recorded after it's been approved by a city or county government and then indexed by book and page number. All legal descriptions in a plat map are described by reference to their lot number, block number, subdivision name, book, and page number. For example, this particular legal description for a property located in Miami-Dade County shows Pine Estates, PB 6541, lot 4, less east, 120 feet, block 5. This means that you could find this parcel of land in the subdivision of Pine Estates in Plat Book 65, page 41. And notice the meets and bounds, plus the lot and block numbers in the description too. So why do these property description methods matter? Property legal descriptions are not to be confused with a property's address. They are two different things that identify a property, but each important on its own. A good way to think about it is, just like you have a social security number that identifies you and is only used really in legal or governmental proceedings, a property's legal description identifies a particular parcel for legal purposes. And just like your name identifies you to the public, a property address identifies a particular property for the public. So when you're a real estate agent and you're helping others sell or buy real estate, making sure you have the correct legal description of the property written correctly on the contract is vital to the sale and purchase of that property. You wouldn't want to sell a house that was not actually the right one. Here's a way to make sure you have the correct legal description of a property. Check the deed, which most likely can be found recorded in your county property appraiser's office online. Thanks for joining me on this journey through land surveying using the meets and bounds method, the government rectangular survey method, and the lot and block method. Best of luck with your real estate exam. You've got this, and soon you'll be on your way to a successful career in real estate. If you found this video interesting, Give it a like, leave me a comment on what you'd like to know more about, and subscribe for more fun real estate exam tips and tricks. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video. If you're looking to elevate your math understanding and boost your chances of acing the real estate exam, I wanna share something special with you. Introducing Math Skills for Real Estate Success, your ultimate companion to mastering real estate math packed with comprehensive exercises step-by-step -step explanations, and invaluable tips. This workbook is designed to help you conquer any math challenge that comes your way. Head over to justcallmaggie.com forward slash shop and grab your copy today. Trust me, this workbook will be your secret weapon in becoming a math wits in the world of real estate.